Well, hello everybody and welcome to Mikey Taylor Gaming, where today we're taking a look into the world of Cuphead glitches for the PC. Now, because of the type of game this is, there's a ton of unique glitches for it. However, the developers recently decided to patch the game, which means that most of these glitches won't work for you anymore. I, however, fortunately, decided to keep my game offline for long enough to be able to show you guys these amazing glitches. So, without further ado, let's get on with it and I hope you all enjoy. I will see you all at the end card. For a change, why don't we start off the episode with one of the most interesting glitches in the game, the duplication glitch. You too can get an unlimited amount of mugmen, uh, hmm, mugmans? I have no idea what the plural of mugman is, but you can get them in any area of the game except for King Dice or the Devil stages. It's a straightforward glitch that only takes some precise button pressing to get working, and the overworld is the easiest place to practice it, since you don't have 1624 projectiles being fired at you at the same time as trying this one out. So I guess I'll start explaining how to do it. First off, grab yourself a friend and add Mugman to the game, then press start and hover over the remove player 2 option. When you're both set and ready, press confirm on the option and then have player 2 press the join game button on their controller twice, just one frame after removing the player. You've got to be pretty precise with that timing, but get it right and would you look at that? Two Mugman on screen at once. Mugman? Mugmans? Still don't have a clue. Alright, I know that doesn't seem too impressive, but of course you can stack this one as many times as you want to, giving you what the community has donned as the Mugman Army. Cuphead! Cuphead! Don't let them trample you! Oh, Alright then, just stand there. Just let them trample all over you. What do you mean you're still not amazed by this? Well, why don't we try it out on a stage instead then? Using the exact same method on a boss stage, you can get a huge amount of Mugmen for complete madness. They're all controlled by player 2, but they're also all independent of each other. That means that if one dies, then the others can carry on like normal and even parry the dead ones back into play. They all cause their own damage to the bosses too, giving you an ultra quick kill that can bypass all phases of the battles. If you can keep them all alive, that is. It's helpful, but it's difficult at the same time. Oh, and one minor thing, it causes graphical problems with the EX cards too, but that's nothing really compared to what we've just seen. It might just be hard for the game to understand what's going on here, but we're not done yet. Let's confuse it a little more. There's another really easy glitch that confuses the game so much that it freezes the boss Cagney Carnation. When Cagney raises its arms and shows off three projectiles, just dash into one and there's a chance that you'll glitch the boss out and freeze it in place. This is an easy one to do by accident when you mix up the dash and super buttons as often as I do. Don't even ask how I do that because I have no idea. This freeze happens because the projectiles are linked in with the boss's animation. When you get hit by one before it gets shot off, you interrupt the animation and the last projectile never fires, leaving him or her in limbo. Seriously, what gender is this? Game confuses me more than I confuse it, I'm telling you. As you can see already, the glitches in this game were ace before they were patched out. Except if you ran into this next one, it ruined your day if you were having a good run. In the treetop trouble run and gun stage, I managed to randomly activate a glitch where Cuphead just spins in the air. Helpful on my best ever run of the stage too. Typical. At first, I wasn't really sure how I managed to do this, but after some perseverance, I finally found that using a super attack just before the platform gets wiped out is what causes it. The leaf that Cuphead is stood on gets destroyed, so the animation must get interrupted and never ends, just like in the last glitch we took a look at. But this time, if Cuphead gets hit, then the glitch ends, and whilst he's in this spinning stage, you can still fire your weapon by spamming the change weapon button until it starts working again. This isn't the only place in the game that the infinite spinning glitch has happened either. Xavier Clank found that in the Beppy the Clown boss fight, Cuphead can get caught in an infinite spin by using his super and then parrying at just the right time during phase 2 of the fight. And the same thing happens in the rumour Honeybottoms fight by parrying right after a super attack too. But I have to say, honestly, I couldn't get this one to work. It seems like you have to have insane luck to get the right setup for it. And some skill, which I definitely do not have. 
Another completely useless glitch might confuse you if you do it by accident. On the Railroad Wrath stage on Isle 3, you can activate a very minor issue in the first phase using the platform that Cuphead is standing on. As the pumpkins fly overhead, they'll drop bricks onto the valves at the end of the platform, causing it to move one way or the other. If you parry on the other end of the platform at the exact same time as one of these bricks hits, the platform will move in one direction, then suddenly ping back to where it came from. Okay, so that's probably the worst glitch of this episode, I swear. There's only cool or interesting stuff left to see. I think. So the next glitch we're going to take a look at today will scare the hell out of you if you do it by accident. It scared the hell out of me when it happened anyway. If you have a saved game on the second aisle, third aisle or Inkwell Hell, you can glitch the game out by loading that save from the menu and then pressing down and choosing an unused save whilst the loading screen is showing. If you do this, you'll be in the location that you're in on the first save, but it'll be like you've just started a brand new game starting on that aisle. Strange. Opening up the list to check your times and ranks on previous stages shows that nothing has been completed yet, and it's a little glitchy when you start the game like this too. I mean, scrolling over to World 1's stats freezes the menu until you quit out of it. I'm really not sure why that happens, just doesn't know how this wizardry is possible probably. Unfortunately, you can't finish the game by using this method because King Dice wants all of the soul contracts in Inkwell Hell before you can progress, which is a shame. Probably would have led to even more fun. Even though you can't fight the final bosses of the game, you can go back to aisle 2 or 3. You can fight any of the bosses in these aisles without clearing the first one, and they'll even appear in the menu list as defeated. It's short-lived though, because leaving the aisle to a previous one deletes any evidence that you were even on the next aisle in the first place. Seems fair. All that effort for nothing. What a complete waste of time. The weird thing about that though is... well... If you return to the title screen and look at the saved games, you'll still have the percentage logged for the bosses that you defeated, even though they don't appear on the checklist if you reload that save. Hmm... Despite everything else being not so helpful, there is one use for this glitch even if the rest seem kinda pointless. Activating it on an aisle 1 save will start you off on a new game, but completely skip all of the cutscenes and drop you on the island with no messing around. So it's not a completely useless one if you start the game over quite often at least. If you love torture and redoing all of the bosses you worked so hard to beat, I mean. But why would you want to do that? Anyway, enough of the mostly useless glitches. Let's get back on track and see a glitch that can really help us out. This next one can help you to defeat bosses in quick time by using an exploit which takes advantage of quickly swapping your weapons. When you're battling against any boss in the game, swapping between your two weapons rapidly will cause much more damage to the enemy. I mean, my best time for Ribby and Croaks was 1 minute 47, but using the same weapons and swapping between them quickly, I managed a 58 second time. That's a huge difference, but there are still people who can switch weapon fast enough to get it under 50 seconds, which is just completely insane. If we watch the damage glitch in action, you can see how quickly all of the phases of the root pack can be beaten, particularly the potato and the onion phases. All of the bosses can be beaten even faster if you're more skilled than me, which is very likely. This glitch seems to happen because each weapon has a small recharge time before another bullet is fired. By switching weapon, you reset this recharge time and you can fire as many bullets as you want to in a short amount of time. It's kind of tricky to get the technique down optimally because you're trying to focus on everything around Cuphead as well as trying to switch weapons as fast as you can. But it's a perfectly good way of speeding up fights if you've got the skills. Oh, and it even works with the plane levels too. But good luck with those, I can't even play them properly. You'll be glad to know that there are even more glitches that can help certain boss fights be beaten much, much quicker. The first glitch is to do with hitboxes, and it's probably the most simple and the most helpful glitch of the episode. During the fights with Sally stage play and the devil, there are hidden hitboxes still active just off screen during certain parts of the fight, allowing you to cause damage to them during their phase transitions. With the Sally stage play fight, you just have to wait until she moves into phase 2, and on the top left of the screen, you'll find her hitbox. Damage her enough and you'll be able to skip most of phase 2 altogether, making it a much quicker fight overall. 
When it comes to the devil, it's even easier since you don't even have a time limit to do it. You can defeat him without jumping down the hall into phase 2 at all. What a massive oversight from the development team. Using a long range weapon like charge or the pea shooter, stand to the left of the hall and then shoot right above it. If you're hitting the right spot then you'll see the devil's skin that he left behind flashes whenever you cause damage. Stand there for long enough and the devil will get knocked out without you even breaking a sweat. The second way we can glitch out bosses and make them easier can be done in a similar way that we froze Cagney Carnation at the start of this video. When bosses change phases you can still attack them whilst the transition into the next part of the form takes place, making the next phase of the fight a little shorter. If you want to make the rest of the fight a breeze, as I'm sure a lot of you would appreciate, you just have to deal enough damage during the transition to skip the next part of the battle completely. It can be done with a few bosses, but I'm only going to show the Grim Magstick version and the Beppy the Clown version as examples, because it's pretty difficult to do on any other and you guys wait long enough for my videos as it is. During the Grim Matchstick fight you have to deal damage until he's just before the point of switching to phase 2, then wait for his meteor attack. This attack causes him to stay in phase 1 allowing you to cause that little extra damage that we need. As soon as he starts to slide off screen use the regular EX attack a couple of times to the right to cause even more damage. Even though he's off screen, his hitbox remains active to the right until he pops back on screen to the left. If you manage to cause a ton of damage during the transition then Grim will start exploding as soon as you attack him on the left, but the embers will still jump at you as normal. There is a way that we can get this glitch to activate without the embers even jumping at you if you cause just the right amount of damage, which is a little more tricky to do. Regardless of which way you get this to work, at the point that he comes back on screen he should be stuck there, unable to attack you and flashing as if the second phase has just been completed. Then you can just send him a barrage of attacks to finish him off easily. With Beppy the Clown it's even easier, it's just a case of damaging him enough during the first phase using a mixture of EX attacks and the weapon swapping glitch I showed you earlier. Keep on sending him a barrage of bullets and EX attacks and as the transition starts an explosion should appear at the top of the screen, showing that you've skipped the second phase. The balloon dogs should all appear for you to dodge still, but after attacking for a little while longer the third phase form will appear on screen, already defeated. So yay, easy fight. There's one last really easy glitch that makes Mr Chimes, the ninth boss of the King Dice battle, self-destruct. In this battle you parry cards and have to match them up to be able to do any damage. If you select two cards that don't match, Mr Chimes will just shake and then start moving again so that you can try again. Something you might not notice here is that depending on which side of the screen you're on, it'll pan slightly to follow Cuphead's position, an important thing to know for this glitch. If Mr Chimes is at the very edge of the screen when he starts to shake from two wrong card choices, quickly move Cuphead to the other side of the screen. When you do this, the screen follows Cuphead and it causes the boss's hitbox to go out of bounds. That means that when Mr Chimes tries to move again, he'll bounce off the inner boundary and then he'll just shoot off screen and the knockout notice will pop up. Completing bosses with this kind of glitch makes it so much less stressful to defeat them, if you can activate it to begin with. You might not feel the satisfaction of beating them this way though, you cheater. We're going to finish off today's episode in the same way that we finish off Cuphead, with the Devil. We've already seen that he can be beaten without even having to try, but there's also a few unhelpful things to be seen in this battle that you may not have known about too. If you're playing in co-op mode and either Cuphead or Mugman dies before the second phase, jumping down the hall will give you a strange glitch where the surviving character gets stuck in limbo. If player 1 dies before the second phase he can be revived by pressing start when player 2 is in the hall, which is already wrong because he shouldn't be allowed to revive himself like this. If player 2 dies then they have to be removed and then rejoin again, but their icon won't appear in the bottom corner, giving you another glitchy state where if player 1 dies the battle doesn't finish resulting in a soft lock. I genuinely struggle to understand how this glitch got past testing because surely people died before getting to phase 2 of the devil. I mean, I, I just can't work it out. And for the final final glitch today, something that isn't even worth looking at. But hey, I don't think we've had enough pointless glitches in this one, which makes a change from usual, huh? After you defeat phase 1 of the devil, jump down the hall and don't touch anything. 
If you don't move at all after the transition and then start to shoot your weapon, the gun will be shot from behind Cuphead instead of coming from his finger. As soon as you move or stop shooting, it'll pop back into the end of his finger again. And that's it for Cuphead glitches today guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video, I know again that it's been so long since the last release, but I will explain all of this in the end card. Thank you all very much for watching, and don't forget, I love you all. Mwah. Well guys, thank you very much for watching until the end, as always, that was uh, Cuphead glitches, I guess, and there was quite a few amazing glitches in this one, it's just a shame that they've all been patched out now, and I know that that doesn't make for a good video when you can't try them out for yourselves, but it's here for historical reasons, and I'm sure the next one that I record, you'll be able to try out for yourselves. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's it's been so long because I've been trying so hard with my real life job to get things done there and it's been taking away all of my time from video making so I apologise for that but I have a couple of video ideas for the future so hopefully, hopefully, like I said last time, we won't be waiting two months for the next video so yeah. Anyways, if you've enjoyed this glitch picnic and you want to check out other games with glitchy goodness, check out the box above to be taken to a Hat in Time glitch picnic. I don't know why, but that's one of the least popular videos on the channel, but the game is amazing. I just don't think it got the marketing that it should have got, so yeah. If you check it out, then that would be lovely. Again, thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. And don't forget, I love you all. Mwah!